A team of Colorado firefighters are doing their part to help prepare for Hurricane Dorian miles across the country. CBS's Karen Morfitt reports. More than a thousand miles from the Florida coast, a team of Colorado firefighters prepares for Hurricane Dorian. First thought is, you know, making sure that we can take care of our families, let them know that we'll be going, and then going down there and taking care of other people's families. Brian Thomas is one of 16 first responders from eight agencies across the Front Range heading to Florida as part of Colorado Task Force One, an emergency team deployed by FEMA during disaster situations. Mike Parker is the team's training manager. But the big thing is water rescue. So for example, um, we can see we have the boats and things like that available. The team that we have uh, put together are water rescue specialists. Many of them have been through it before. The task force has responded to a number of other disasters, including hurricanes in Florence and Katrina. Thomas says each deployment strengthens their response. Our training is better than it's ever been before, and that's just a nod to the task force and the training that they provide us with. Our equipment is better, and these are all based off of lessons that we learned from the past. With no real idea what to expect, the team hit the road. Thomas says that uncertainty is just part of the job. The thing that we're really there for is lives. Ray Scott has agreed to no longer block his voting constituents following a lawsuit that was settled Friday. This lawsuit applies specifically to social media accounts linked to his state Senate office. It was filed by the ACLU on behalf of Ann Landman, who was unblocked shortly after the lawsuit was filed. The ACLU looked for a federal court order to stop public office holders in Colorado from censoring people on social media as long as those accounts are linked to their official roles. However, according to the Associated Press, they were able to settle this without a federal court order. This is one of two lawsuits involving social media in 2019, both of which cost taxpayers $25,000. A Colorado dad is leading the effort to change conditions in his child's school. He says the temperatures inside classrooms are way too hot, which makes it difficult for students to concentrate. So he got together with other parents to make a change and cool the school with fans. Michael Abeta has the details. The kids can't focus at all when it's that hot. And then to top it off, the teachers are the same way. Scott Balderman has two kids that go to Lincoln Elementary. When his oldest, his son, started school a couple of years ago, he noticed for the first two weeks he just wasn't learning. It was too hot. I was pushing almost 90 degrees. He knew he had to do something, but the cost of air conditioning made that idea unrealistic. But he thought, what about fans? For $400 a piece, we could buy and install 20 inch commercial grade window fans and install them in all the classrooms. And so, uh, the summer of 2017, I came in and got all those installed and then put them on timers. So, it created a, essentially a whole house fan effect where at night, about 2 a.m., the fans would kick on and then it would bring in that really cool air. Uh, during the night, so then it was almost in the 70s, low 70s uh, when school started. During the day, the fans work alongside DPS's swamp coolers as an exhaust to pull cool air over the students. He says it's made a huge difference. He can tell by his son's behavior. The complaining has stopped. The fans cost $4,000, which the PTA raised money for. It's much more cost effective than AC. He thinks it could be a solution for other hot DPS schools. DPS has over $2 billion of bond debt already. So I think it would be more appropriate to come up with an energy efficient solution that's cost effective. The 2019 World Slopper Eating Contest was held this weekend as part of the Colorado State Fair. Now, if you're not familiar, the slopper is a cheeseburger that's smothered in green chili sauce. The winner of the contest was Darren Breeden, who chowed down 28 sloppers in just eight minutes. Darren may now have a stomachache, but he's also $4,000 richer. Yogis are coming together for some Colorado animals as they opened up their class to some pigs in search of a home. Tori Mason has the story. Yoga is known for having many positive health benefits for humans, but this class has been really beneficial for animals, too. Their favorite pose, downward hog. Come back to center, back to child's pose. This little piggy went to yoga. Just breathe here. This little piggy likes to roam. Opposite side. This little piggy needed more care, so now Hog Haven is home. As he was suffering from seizures, and his owner didn't want to provide vet care for him. Hog Haven has rescued more than 200 pigs like Guapo. Most were pets that grew too big. Others were better off being orphaned than owned. We've also worked with animal control to bring in 
and stray pigs, um, pigs from hoarding cases, neglect cases, and we've also saved a few from being slaughtered. They all, you love it up close, don't you? Cheers to yoga suggested they bring in a few rescues. Well, Penelope's been practicing her kisses. The yogis can't get enough. But today you're going to find your inner pig. Even though they tend to hog the mat. Oh my God, there's They don't mind the Cheerios either. Plus, the price of pig yoga keeps them full on the mat and in the pen. It provides feed for them, vet care, their bedding, and other materials that we need for the pigs. It's a tough class to end for pigs and people. You may get kisses on your toes or your fingers. When their teacher says it's over, they all say, nah, must stay. 100% of the proceeds from this yoga class go back to Hog Haven. For more information on the work they do with these pigs, visit cvsdenver.com. Reporting in Denver, I'm Tori Mason, and this is Chutney covering Colorado First.